So a very good morning to everyone and uh, welcome again to the lecture. So today we would like to talk about management and managing. And uh, the outline for the talk, we will talk about the functions of the management and there's a framework for, 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 for that. But before I, uh, I move on and talk about the different uh, functions of management, I want to ask you a question. What does management mean to you? When you hear the term management, what, 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 do, you, what do you think? What do you have in mind? This is just a question to start the thinking in the morning. Uh, yes, one, one, one second. Yeah. Uh, leading a project. Leading a project. Okay, so leading a project is, is uh, management, yes. Organization and controlling something. Organizi or organizing and controlling yeah. something. Okay, good, good. Anyone else would like to say anything? Yeah, Chris. Okay, uh, I think management means how well you uh, plan and manage your resources, time and people. Right. To perform and achieve a project's objective. Right. So how well you... Management is how well you plan. How well you plan and manage. Yeah. Plan. So management is how you plan and manage. Okay. Anyone else would like to say something? Great. Actually, that was very useful. Very, 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 very good. And um, the basic functions of the management, or of management in, in general, are um, planning, and organizing, then directing, and controlling. So this is, this, these are the planning, organizing, directing, and controlling are the basic functions of uh, management. Interestingly, um, management, which is something that is widely accepted now, we take it for granted uh, when you go to, uh, even to a shopping complex, they would say um, the shop is opened or closed by instruction of management. There is an expectation that every operation will have some sort of, of, um, of, of management Management as a discipline, uh, as, as, as an art that took uh, shape, is a relatively new uh, phenomena. So it, it was really around the, um, world, the, the, the World War I when um, the discipline of management started to um, take shape and people start to see that there are commonality between running different uh, operations in, in, in different places. So previously it was really uh, very dependent on the style of that individual who have uh, led the company or the organization, he or she, and the people who have been studying the discipline of management realize that there are so many commonalities in the functions, in the roles of management that it's no longer about the individual but about how he or she uh, or what he or she can do to achieve the, the business uh, goals. So it started really in commercial kind of setup. People for a while refused that um, a university can be managed. They uh, refused that a hospital, for example, can be, can be managed. There is a, there's a resistance to, to this notion. Uh, there is a, a feeling that maybe uh, you, you, could manage, um, you could manage an economical uh, activity, but it's difficult to or uh, not even right, it's not correct to manage maybe a religious organization or, or an educational institution. However, this is, uh, I think now, in the past, now management is expected and acceptable 
to be uh, throughout. So countries are managed, universities are managed, uh, religious institutions are managed, and uh, hospitals are managed. So let, let us talk about this framework of PODC, which explains what are the basic functions of, of management. So as I said, management can actually be considered a form of a technology. You know, we, we often think of a technology of, as something that you know, we can use, but technology and innovation can be also a process. So I give you an example. Uh, insurance is an innovation and is a technology. And this is, uh, it's a process. It's, uh, there's nothing tangible you have. Um, sales by installment is a technology and innovation that we now take it for granted. But in actual fact, there was a certain period of time where uh, you, you didn't have that. Um, there was a, a manufacturer of um, agricultural uh, equipment in the United States who, um, you know, they, 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 they make big equipments that the farmers are supposed to buy. But the farmers don't have the money to buy. So they ended up with having equipment, but there is no demand. So this individual thought of creating demand through saying, okay, I'll give you this machine first, and instead of you pay me out of your past saving, you will promise to pay me out of your future earnings. And that's an innovation and, and technology. So that's why I would like to, to drive home the point that um, management as a process is technology, is innovation, and is also a science. And its role is really to effectively and efficiently achieve the business or the organization objective. One of the major tasks of the management is to ensure the business sustainability. So you have a business that's running today and you would like the business to continue running in the future and the management, the man are, are tasked with ensuring that this will happen. So management is also about the efficient use of resources. So there's no point that you achieve the organization objectives or, or the business goals using so many resources and, and, and wasting them. This is, this is not proper management. This is no management in, in actual fact. And management also is aimed at or tasked with completing the work in accordance to guidelines, uh, laws, and, 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 and things like that that are prevailing in that specific uh, locality or country. So if you are running a certain business in, let's say, in Malaysia, and you are now starting another, another uh, uh, branch in, let's say, Indonesia. So the management's responsibility is to know what are the requirements, what are the legal requirements, how to get the uh, ap approvals, the licenses, and, and everything related to the business. So all these are uh, under the purview of the management. So the first part of the management is planning. And it's a basic management function. And it starts with identifying the business goals. What are the goals that the business is aiming at achieving? So this is really the first, uh, the first uh, 
point of, of planning? What do you want to really achieve? And then what is the course of action that we need to take in order for us to, to actually achieve uh, these goals? So how do we go about that? So on a personal level, let's say uh, I, have, uh, I have a goal of maybe uh, losing weight. So if my goal is to lose weight, how, how, how am I going to achieve that? Will I do it through diet? Will I do it through exercising? Will I do it through uh, uh, surgery? All these are you know, different, different ways of, of achieving that. And this is all happening at the uh, planning stage. The uh, goals uh, have to be SMART. And SMART actually is, is an acronym for um, uh, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and, and, and timely or time bound. So we'll talk about smart goals in, uh, in, a, in a while, in a short while. And one of the major, maybe most difficult uh, task of the management that is happening during the planning time is really forecasting. So how do you forecast? Uh, how many customers you'll be having? How do you forecast what will these customers be needing so that you build um, a capacity uh, accordingly or based on that? So for example, you, you are building a university. How many lecture theaters you would like to have? Uh, uh, how many students you are expecting? Uh, how, do you do the, how do you do that forecasting, which is an extremely important uh, task that's expected uh, from, the, uh, th from the managers? And uh, the forecasting will require, by definition, a very good understanding of the entire um, entrepreneurial ecosystem. So you will need to know what will most likely the prevailing economic situation will be, uh, how would the uh, you know, government policies affect your business, what will be the competitors doing, and things like that. And, uh, one of the uh, key elements of planning is actually decision uh, making. Again, a uh, very tricky uh, part of, of management. If you get it right, um, it would be great. But uh, sometimes when, you, when we make the, right, the wrong decision, the consequences could be uh, extremely dire for, for the business. So in short, planning is about developing of business plans. So if I refer this back to what we have been uh, talking about, it's literally about you know, preparing a business plan. So let me talk about the SMART goals now. So they are, as I said, specific, measurable, attainable, and realistic and time, timely. So this is what we mean by smart goals. Now, I'm sure you've heard of this term before. Uh, even on, a, on an, an academic or a personal level, people say, let your goals be smart or try to set smart goals for yourself. But we will, we will try to go uh, through this uh, uh, item by item, and we'll try to give some um, examples on how to set smart goals. So specific goals, when, you need, when, when someone comes and, and, and say a general uh, statement, often we say, can you be more specific? What, what, do, you, what do you mean? So how, how to be specific when setting a goal? You need to ask yourself the four whys and the one how, four Ws and one H. So who is involved? What needs to be accomplished? When will that be accomplished? Or wh where will that be accomplished? When will it happen? And how will it be um, achieved? So if you, if you are thinking of setting a goal, and um, you just, I I'll give some examples. So, so when you are thinking of setting a goal, you will need to think who? Is it me? Is it the whole class? Is it, uh, do I need other people to be with me? Again, 
what's exactly that I need to, to, to achieve and where, when, and in, in, what, in what form. So examples, sorry. If I say I want to get in shape, this is very, very general. What, what do you mean? mean? What, what, getting in shape to you could be very different uh, from uh, what I think, uh, I think of. So this is a general uh, goal. It's, it's not specific at all. But if I say I want to join a gym, work out three times a week for a minimum of one hour at a time. This is, this is specific. You could say it's me. I'll, it's me who will be joining the gym. Then I will be working out for three times a week and each time is one, uh, one hour. So, so, so the how is the gym. So I want to get in shape, but how is through the gym. So I'm not going for a surgery. I'm not planning to have a diet. I'm going to do it through physical exercise. So that's, that's the how. Uh, uh, the, the when or the time element is the three times a week, the um, uh, one hour each time. Um, the, so so this, is, this is definitely uh, more specific, and at least uses the, the when, the how, and the who. Okay, so this is how you can make uh, your goals more, more specific. The other one is measurable. So my measurement in the previous goal maybe was by time. So I say I go for three times a week for one hour each time. This is, this is a form of measurement. Now, this form of measurement may be a good form of measurement and maybe it's not. So uh, may, maybe someone would say, Look, I don't really care how many times you get to the gym. I think you need to lose 20 kilos within five months. So this becomes like a totally different form of measurement. I'm not really uh, that keen on seeing how many times you go and, and, and work out, but I'm looking at the results from a totally different uh, point of view. So um, in the measurement of part of creating measurable goals, the first thing is the metric or the rubric or the ruler that I'm going to use to measure my goal. Is it weight loss? Is it time spent at the gym? Is it, is it how people perceive me? All these are extremely important. And you could set a goal and if you put the wrong metric or the metric that doesn't really drive you and you will get results that maybe or, or no, will never get the results and, and you will see that uh, deciding what you measure is extremely important and it is not a trivial task we say that energy flows where attention goes so if you keep on measuring certain element, if you're measuring the temperature, if you're measuring your weight, or there will be some attention going in that direction and that will drive your, your energy into that direction. Not only your energy, but also the energy of the people who are following you. So people will know that, you, that this is something that you are, that you are following and uh, they will maybe notice that and if you are in a position of power, if you are the manager, then maybe even your department will start to follow suit. So what's the metric? That's the first thing. Now, how to know when the goal is achieved? This is another extremely important factor when you are setting goals. You know when you set goals that are unmeasurable, like we want to improve quality. You don't show people a target to, to aim at. You know, if you are uh, running or racing, you know where the, the end line is. And this actually motivates you, uh, gives you all the energy, because it creates an aim that I'm shooting at. But if you just say, you just run, I think this is going to be a, a rather demotivating um, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of situation. So 
the, the goal is measurable if, when we achieve it, not only we know that we've achieved it, everyone will know that we, we've achieved it. So if, for example, our goal is to send a man to the moon and bring him back alive, when we send a man to the moon and bring him back alive, we will know and everyone else would, would know. If I say my goal is to achieve a CGPA of 3.5, when I get it, no one will say, no, no, we thought this 3.5 is not uh, as good as the other 3.5. This is 3.5. This is, this is a very specific goal. Sometimes the goals are monetary. So I want my business to achieve um, a sales of $1 million within uh, three months. Very clear. Your sales department, when they achieve it, they actually know exactly that they have achieved it. Rather than we say, we want more sales. This is, what, what does, how do I measure that? So examples, as I said, if we say increase sales, that's not measurable. But if we say increase sales by 10% compared to last year. So that's measurable. We know that we are focusing now on what? Our metric is the sales, the dollar, dollar and cent. And the, uh, the point on that ruler is if I have made 100 million of sales last year, this year I'm aiming at 110 million dollars worth of sales. So this is the how to make the, the goals measurable. Now, attainable. This is actually a very interesting um, part of the SMART goals framework. People may think that, oh, attainable means let me, let me make my goal uh, something that I have done in the past, something that I know that I can, I can achieve. Let me not stretch myself. This is actually not the point of having the attainable or sometimes called achievable uh, goal. It's rather what kind of skills, what kind of attitudes, behaviors, knowledge, capabilities that I will need to have so that I can achieve the goal. And I should be able to know that it's, if this is a personal goal, so I'm talking about my personal skills, attributes, attitudes, behaviors, knowledge, and if this is an organizational goal, it, it talks about the same thing but for the organization. How do we ensure that the organization will be having all, what, all that is needed so the goal is achievable? Okay, so this is, this is very, very interesting. So for example, if, if um, uh, um, an organization would like to expand in China. And uh, having people who can speak Chinese uh, at, and have also maybe engineering skills is an important uh, factor for the success of that goal. Is not, I say, oh, so do I have any Chinese staff? No, I don't have, so this is not achievable. This is not the way to think. But within the time frame that I've given to my organization to achieve that, how will my uh, organization put itself in a position so that it has the capabilities to make the goal attainable? So should I, for example, take one of my engineers and send him or her to learn Chinese? Or should I maybe employ someone who already has both the experience or the knowledge that I want and the linguistic Capabilities. So these are different ways of doing the same thing, and different people will be doing. Excuse me, will be doing it differently. So the, the goals have to be able to be to be attainable. Has to be able to motivate the people to work towards them. So how do I to ensure that the goal is attainable, especially when you are talking about an organization? The goal has to be set in such a way that people feel that they can do it. People are communicated to in a way in the team so that they feel like this is doable. Building the car is doable. 
uh, uh, starting the uh, uh, the aquarium is a doable thing. Uh, building the, our Korean Finnish restaurant is something that we can do. We we do have it, it motivates us. We have the skills. We have both the um, Korea dimension, the Finland dimension, so we are the right people to, to achieve that. Realistic goals, um, these are really related to the environment. So you need to acknowledge the, the ecosystem that you are living in so that you, uh, you, 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 you set a realistic goal, a goal that you can achieve. And also you need sometimes to accept the physical uh, constraints that we, we know that there is gravity. It's, um, we don't have any technology thus far to suspend gravity. So I don't just simply make a goal that defies gravity. But so if I, w if I really need something to fly, which is defying gravity, maybe then the goal would be doing it differently rather than through defying a physical um, uh, law of, of nature. And uh, the timely goals, it's, it, it's when it has a very clear time frame. So as, as uh, we've seen, the time frame could be I'm going to the gym three times a week. It could be I'm increasing the uh, sales uh, within the next three months or I'm reducing my weight within the next six months and, and things like that. So the time is extremely important. I'm sure all of you would like to graduate. I'm sure all of you would like to graduate within four years. You don't just say, I want to graduate. And I could graduate in either 10 years, 20 years. I, I don't think so. It, it goes without saying. But you see, when you are setting new goals, you need to make this clear. So you don't tell your people, we need to increase the sales by 10% will do it. When? We will let you know when we do it. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't help. You need to know when will that, will that, uh, will that take place. So this is really what, uh, what, uh, what, what, what's meant by timely or sometimes called time-bound goals. So planning actually happen or, or, or can have two, uh, two types. One is called strategic planning. So this is a bit long term. Often, uh, it depends on the, on the business, but often is three years and, and, and above. Could be even five years and above. And uh, at a personal uh, level, uh, sometimes people say, where do you want to see yourself in five years from today? This is actually not a trivial question. It's quite, quite a tough question. But it helps to give it a thought. So it's, it, it focuses on the bigger picture, it forces you, because if I say, where do you want to see yourself in, in few, I mean, in, in a year from now, I think those who, have, uh, uh, who are in the final year really would like to get graduated, get their degree, maybe start looking for a job. So this is a bit hectic, short term, which we are going to talk about, but if I'm talking about five years from today. This actually gives you, yeah, where do I want to be five years from today? It forces you to think in a different way, thinks of your life in a different perspective. It does the same thing for organizations and businesses. So it's, it's, it's a bit more f philosophical. It forces you to think, you know, why do we exist um, uh, b beyond making money? Is there anything else we would like to have? So this is the the purpose of having uh, the strategic planning. You, you remember we are still in the first uh, function of management, which is planning. Uh, the second one would be organizing and then directing and controlling. But you will, you will notice that most of my time will be spent really on, on the planning part because it is it's extremely important. The tactical planning is normally less than three years. Sometimes, depending on the market, it could be even for three months or even one month. So you are, you are tracking, let's say, your sales. 
and you, you are tracking it on a daily basis, uh, you really need to meet the sales target. Um, uh, these are tactical. These are, and, and, and it can happen also on, uh, on a personal uh, kind of basis. So if, if uh, you have uh, a patient in, in the hospital and he or she is having, let's say, um, low blood platelets count, I think you will be maybe checking this every six hours with a, with a, with a blood test because this could be life-threatening. So when you are doing a tactical thing, you are not really looking at the big picture. You are looking at survival. You want to just do it. Uh, make sure that the, you know, the business is, is, is sustainable and survive or make sure that the patient is uh, able to you know, survive until uh, you know, the next week or the next day and measure or monitor the vital signs and uh, maybe give antibiotics or give uh, whatever medicine that needs to be um, given very, as quickly as you can. So these are the two types of planning. It could be strategic, it could be tactical. Now, you will need both. Both on a personal level and an organizational level, you, will, you should have a strategic plan. What should happen later or how do I see myself or my business in 5, 10, 15 years? But at the same time, for today, what am I going to have for lunch or what, is, what, what do I have for the next class is also important. So you, we will need to cover both the strategic and the tactical uh, framing, uh, uh, frames of the planning. So I'll be talking a bit about the <coughs> strategic planning now. So the strategic planning normally has um, four main um, components. The first one is called the vision. And the vision is what the organization or business or individual wants to be or how it wants the world to be. So that's a vision. What do you want to be eventually as an individual or organization, or, and sometimes and, how do you want the world to be eventually? So if you are passionate about um, helping the poor, maybe what you want to see is wo world without poverty. If you are a doctor, medical doctor, maybe you want to see the world without AIDS. Or maybe you want to see yourself uh, a Nobel Prize winner who have invented or discovered the cure for AIDS. So this is a vision, is what? Now, you will notice now um, companies do have Visions, organizations do have visions. Uh, I was doing a search uh, last night, even the CIA has a vision and a mission. So that's, that's, that's normal. And, and this is a very important component because you guys are expected to put you the vision and the mission of your uh, venture in the business plan. So I, I, uh, I would like you to really pay attention and uh, ask questions if, uh, if you guys have any uh, questions. So that's the vision. The other part is the mission. The mission is really the purpose, why you exist. So the vision is an answer to a question that normally starts with what. The mission is an answer to a question that normally starts with why. What is the purpose? So. Uh, if I am the, uh, the doctor that wants to cure AIDS, my mission, the thing that I do every day is I fight disease or I um, um, do research and development on vaccines for diseases specifically for AIDS. 
Uh, if I am from the organization that wants to see the world free of poverty, what I will be doing on a daily basis? What do you think I'll be doing? Uh, perhaps some charity work to increase awareness on poverty and collect funds to help yeah. them. So maybe I will do charity. Uh, what, what else I could do? So charity is uh, give the guy a fish. What I could do? Dominic, you want to try? So I could do charity. So there are poor, I could, poor people, I could do charity, give them some handouts, I, or I could? Donations. So I could give them donations, yes. What else? Yes. So now I have to try. Teach them how to fish. Teach them how to fish. So I could be actually having, so, so, so this, is, this is important. This is, this is actually important because certain people see the way out of poverty is through aid. And this is, this is not necessarily at an individual level. It could be at a continent level. So there are people who think we should be keeping on giving aids to the, the less developed parts of the world. <clears throat> Hopefully, if eventually, uh, this situation will end and we'll have a world without poverty. But some people <clears throat> have the opinion that no. AIDS is not working. We have been giving AIDS for so long. We have been giving donations and charity for so long. This has to stop. Let's teach people how to improve their situation themselves. Let's invest in that, in the, in that continent or in that country. Let's invest. Go with a businessman mentality. We have an investment there. Through that, the people themselves, they will be changing their economical realities. Right? So this is the mission, depending on whether I'm a charitable person or I'm a person that um, do it through uh, investment, that's my mission. But maybe the vision is the same. Both of us will want to see a, wor a world without poverty, a world without crime, a world without whatever. So that's how you want, to, you want the world to be. And it could be an organization that wants to see itself as the um, number one um, university in the country, or the preferred university, the preferred school, the preferred car manufacturer, is entirely up to us. But we always remember that the vision is an answer to a question that normally starts with what, and the mission is the answer to a question that, question that normally starts with um, uh, how? How am I doing that? Then we have the core values. Core values are the beliefs that I personally have, or if this is a personal level, or the organization has, and that it will adhere to in its journey towards realizing its vision. So these are things that are very important because they will be guiding our decision making. So for example, if integrity is a core value, this is something that we will have to adhere to not 99% of the times, not 99.5% of the times, not 99.9% .9 of the times, but 100% of the time. And while I am doing business in, let's say, a different locality, let's say it's a norm that you need to give some money to the officials in that place, for you to get approvals. Let's say it's a norm. So what would, and if integrity is a core value for my organization, what do you think the, should the organization do? So 
you want to open a manufacturing facility in X country, in that country, unless you give the government official certain amount of money, you just forget about getting the license. They won't give you the license. So what should we do if integrity is a core value? Let's say we do it only this time, right? Should we do that, Mike? I think avoid it if possible, definitely. So it's not possible? I mean, um, as in, if, you, if the market is, uh, if you can afford to lose that market, I think just lose it. The people are moving in, those people who don't mind paying, a little, because the money that this guy is asking for is not a huge amount. I can afford it. The competitors are, this is a, quite an important market, I feel. The competitors, they don't, have, they, they, they don't mind. They say, okay, what to do? You know, this is a necessity I have, to, I have to give. But for us, we said that integrity is a core value. And uh, on a 100% moral standpoint, there definitely no. So I will lose that market. Yeah. So, so th that's actually the definition, of, the definition of a core value. If this is really a core value, then this is the way that you have to, um, uh, we have to behave. Uh, some, some, some companies, their core value is, they say our employees are our customers. So the employee, let's say I work for this university, the university, if it's a core value for it that I am, I'm, as an employee, I'm gonna be as valuable to them as the customer, then there is a certain way of, of, of behaving. So I give you an example. There is an airline that exactly says this, our first or most important customers are our staff. And uh, there was a pilot who applied for a job in that airline and they really needed pilots at that time. When they did a reference check on that pilot, they realized that or discovered that a year ago or so, when this pilot was working for another um, <coughs> airlines, he was rude to one of their ground staff. For whatever reason, he, was, he insulted a ground staff of the, the, the staff at the gate. So if this is really a core value, these people should be able to reject the application of that pilot whom they need on the basis of that this is a core value. And that's exactly what they did. So the core value are things that you really, really believe in, not like things you think you should believe in most of the times. So if you think respect is a core value, you have to really respect. If you think that uh, innovation is a core value. You should always innovate, encourage innovation, not when people innovate, you go and punish them if the innovation doesn't give you the payback. So we innovate if it is in our uh, interest. We behave with integrity if possible. That's not a core value. So it's important that you identify the core values. Why, why do we need to identify the core values? Because especially in an organization, if we know that integrity is a core value and this is respected throughout the organization, then decision making is very easy. You will know that there is no way that you could operate in that locality without paying bribes, without being and supporting corruption. And this is, integrity is a core value. So it's very simple. You know that this market you won't go in, no matter what. Even if you are losing market share, even if your, uh, your competitors are advancing, you just, it's, 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 it's too bad. That's, that's a reality of life. So this is the, the core uh, value. The last part is the strategy, which is really the roadmap for us to achieve uh, our uh, targets. So again, if I go back to the eradication of 
let's say, poverty or eradication of illiteracy, how do you want to eradicate illiteracy, for example? So if I say I will be eradicating illiteracy through technology, so my strategy is to leverage over the technology and maybe run MOOCs, uh, uh, make things available online, uh, pro, uh, train the teachers in the places where a lot of uh, uh, illiteracy is still uh, prevalent and, 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 and use technology to do that. Uh, I could say my strategy to eradicate illiteracy is through volunteering. So I go to young people like yourself and I say, would you like to volunteer for maybe three months to go and teach English in a village somewhere in X or Y or Z country. So this is, this is a different strategy. And it's good to have a strategy that we will uh, focus uh, on so that we have uh, a roadmap or a guideline on how we are uh, going to achieve it. When you have a strategy, you know where will you be focusing your resources. So you cannot say, I'll try to eradicate illiteracy in each and every possible way. Why? Because if you are focusing on volunteering, your message is done differently. Your uh, ads are crafted differently. And your funding will go in a certain direction. So maybe you will <clears throat> have to fund the air tickets and the uh, accommodation costs for your volunteers when they go and teach. If you say, no, I'm going to do it through technology, then maybe your money, your funding, your, 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 your resources will go into a different direction. They will go into uh, building servers and, and websites and things like that. So you cannot be like doing everything. This is a bit uh, non-strategic. Uh, so these are the four items you please recall that we are still at the planning uh, function. Of, uh, of the management. And in the planning, we identified both uh, strategic and um, uh, strategic and tactical uh, planning. And the strategic, we put these four uh, functions. So it seems to me we have question there. Any question, sorry? What's the question? Any question? Because you seem to be discussing among yourselves. So I thought it's, it's related to this, I'm sure. So if you have a question, it would be very good to share with all of us. No question. Oh, so, okay, thank you. Sorry to disturb your discussion. Po apologize about that. Sorry. Any question about, about this thus far? The planning part, the strategic part, the vision, the mission. So these are things, as I said, I expect it to be in your uh, business plan. Uh, not every vision and mission that you see of the bank that you deal with, of the uh, hospital, uh, of the uh, government agency, not all of them are actually that well crafted. Some of the visions and mission are really compelling and written in a way that can drive the, um, the staff to work on them. The staff are able to, to narrate them because they could, they could see a meaning to what the, whatever they are doing through that vision and mission. And sometimes it's just simply a very long-winded statement that they are having it just because they thought uh, it's good, it's cool to have a mission and vision. Yes, a question here. Yeah. Can we have more than one mission and vision? Can we have more than one mission and vision? Mm. And uh, uh, stay with me. Yeah, I have a discussion. Okay. So, 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 uh, why do you <clears throat> why do you think you may need more than one vision and mission? Uh, maybe the company has uh, different prospects. Right. So, so the company is is very big. So it has variety of uh, of businesses. So it has a hospital and a university and maybe a travel agency and, uh, uh, and a shopping mall. There are, there are companies. Are you referring to this? 
uh, not only the specific branch, but overall, right. all together, like the main hit. Right. Okay. Uh, who, who, who would like to help me answer this? So you have a huge company, and um, maybe you have different missions for different departments or different, yeah? What do you think? Is this a good idea or not? So Mike, uh, Chris thinks it's a good thing? Um, to me, the mission is more like objectives and goals that can be uh, very specific to each department, so it's possible. Uh, I think the core value should be one that is only one for the entire company, but there can be many missions. Right. What about the vision? Um, the vision would basically be like an outlook of how the company expected to be. So I guess that's only one as well. Right. But is this, is this, is the vision is an outlook of how the company is expected to be or how the company wants itself to be. This is, this is a very important, I mean, what he said is an extremely important statement because often people don't say, you know, they're not looking for what they can be good at. Or they say, okay, I am a university. So what is expected of me? Then they go and see what do other universities do, and they sort of either copy it or make something very similar. Then you go and you find that you end up with organizations that are very similar, very difficult to, to differentiate. But if you recall from our value proposition, from our marketing uh, lecture, the key thing is to be different. To be different is extremely important. It has a, a meaning. So what, what, what do you think, Chris? You put it that way, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult to argue. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so anyone else would like to, uh, to respond? So is it, is it uh, so are you convinced that the mission, maybe it's better to be the same? No, not really, yeah. So the question is still, Kesh, would you like to shed some light and share some experience? You, you understand the question, right? So, so should we have, if, if the business is diversified, should we have variety of visions and missions? Yeah, I think that you can have one vision, but various missions. That means right. to accomplish a particular vision, I can have many missions to accomplish my vision. Right. And like uh, Christopher said as well, uh, I, it's also very important to have only one core value as a whole. Right. So these two things, your core value and your vision, is, and that's what your mission tries to accomplish. These two things, your core vision just makes it stronger. Yeah, so I think you can have various missions, but one vision is like if you have a company that controls a lot of things, so maybe that's your vision. I want to have a company that the company will be the biggest company in the world or whatever it is you want. But various missions can be put out to accomplish that vision. What do you think? Yeah. Um, I think it's okay if you have various visions and missions as long as they don't conflict with each other. Right. So it's okay to have various as long as they don't conflict with each other. Okay. Want to say something? Okay. Great. Um, what is happening, I think in the world there are all sorts of things. I, I know of... Uh, of uh, companies that, uh, in terms of missions, different departments will have different missions. Uh, the mission also can sometimes change from time to time. So we will have maybe a five-year mission. When the mission is accomplished, you could go for, for another mission. So the mission is definitely more uh, flexible. The vision, if personally, I believe, 
if this is one brand, the vision needs to be the same. The vision, so if I say, if all of us, let's say within that one business, if all of us achieve our goals, our hospital, our travel business, our manufacturing business, if all of us achieve our mission, how would the world look like? The world would look like the same. <laughs> so, so if the world, actually, if we, when we achieve our goals, the world will remain the same. I think we are, it means we, we don't have to exist. From, from, from that point of view, do, 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 you, get, do you get what I mean? So, so, so if, if this business that we are doing is actually not needed, when we achieve our goals, you feel no difference. Then it means this business, I don't know why it exists in the first place. Maybe it just exists to make money. And, and the moment you have a disruptive innovation coming in, or uh, someone else offers something slightly better, people will, 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 will leave us. So that's why it's, it's really a soul searching kind of exercise. What's your, uh, what's your uh, project? Let me give you the, the mic. The on campus car wash. It's an on campus car wash. So, what do you think your mission would be? Let me just help you so that you can just put it there. Uh, we haven't decided yet. You haven't decided yet. So, what will you be doing? What's the purpose of your existence? To wash cars on the campus. So, you'll be washing cars on campus. And um, so I, and, and then you will make a huge mess and uh, there'll be like pools of water everywhere and is that? No. So you'll be doing it, so will you make the customers happy? Will you do it in a, an efficient way? Will you, so these are also parts of, you, the, so you need to really incorporate the value proposition there. So when, when, when you are there and, and you are successful, I think all the cars on campus will look great will look clean and people will be so happy to drive such clean cars maybe then then you know when you achieve your 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 mission the world will look different slightly different yeah great thanks that was good so um, we'll continue so I'll give some examples of mission statements so let's say we have uh, an organization that wishes to eradicate illiteracy. A, a vision could be a world without illiteracy. Zero illiteracy. Every child above six can read and write anywhere in the world. You know, these are examples of very compelling visions that may, you may need, I don't know, a century to achieve, but this is what make you wake up in the morning. This is something that maybe doesn't exist yet, maybe not, will not even be achieved in your lifetime, but you think the work that you are putting is going to contribute towards that. Your mission is contributing really towards that. So the mission would be providing educational opportunities to children who are outside the school system. That's a mission. So you don't go and try to teach even the children who are within the school system, because that will, you know, will, will waste your resources. So your mission, you will see every child who is, for whatever reason, outside the school system and provide him or her with the educational opportunity. Your strategies then could be through, I don't know, the technology, through volunteering, through a variety of, of, of ways. Now, you may have a tourism company, your vision is, to become number one tour company in East Malaysia. That, that's a vision. Now, how will you measure it is, is entirely up to you. Maybe you do a survey or <clears throat> your mission maybe is providing affordable and forgettable tours. So every tour that you are having has to be affordable and has to be unforgettable. Then this becomes your mission. So it drives you. Now, you may do it differently, I don't know, but these are examples of a vision and, 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 uh, and a mission. 
this is a, a, a rule of thumb. Normally, we start with, with the mission. Sometimes we actually know what we want to do. Maybe the vision part needs a bit more um, uh, soul searching. So the, the mission statement can be crafted if you combine your value proposition. So if your value proposition for your business is compelling and really different, so it's not I wash cars. So, but there are so many car wa wash around the world. So how is your car different? Is it, is it new? Is it cheap? Is it, what is the value that it adds? And then you combine it with its major measure of success. How are you going to measure it? If you put these things together and then you work, you craft, you refine the, the statement, you will eventually get almost you know, there in terms of building your, your mission, uh, mission statement. Now, you ask yourself a question, how would the world look when the mission is accomplished? Then that most likely would be your vision. Or you can ask, how would I look like? Or who would I be when, the, when my mission is accomplished and that's most likely going to be your vision okay it's uh, it's again it's not a trivial exercise this you cannot just have the value proposition the measure of success put them together and you got your machine it doesn't work like that there is um, you know it's it's a process of refining and soul searching until you find a nice uh, a nice mission. Um, next two weeks, we will be having a number of uh, workshops to help you, you know, start putting material into your business plans. And this could be one of the things that we will we will work with you uh, on. So this is what I wanted you to know about planning, and I'm now ready to move into uh, organizing. So you ha you now you have a plan. The plan is you've set your targets, you know, you've, you've forecasted what the market needs, you think you've got good targets, roughly you know how you are going to do them, but this is still most likely still on the paper. You haven't necessarily appointed anyone, you haven't necessarily, you know, rented a place, still all a plan. Then you start with uh, organizing and um, so you need to develop an organization chart, which is something that we've worked on. So these resources that I will need, how will they work together? Will it be uh, a hierarchical kind of uh, 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 organization chart or, or a matrix organization chart? How do I want different um, business functions to, to work together? This is a decision you make at the organization uh, stage. Then, literally, the organization is about orchestrating. It's, it's like you are having a concert. So you have so many instruments working together, and you as a maestro, if you are a good manager, a person with the knowledge, the capabilities, the skills, you orchestrate all these resources in a timely basis so that the results are achieved, which are the goals of the business. You, you know, this is something that we take for granted. I'm going to, to, to pick an, an example that I've just was discussing before the class with uh, the team. You don't mind I talk about that? So, so they do have, actually they are in a way the team that was the first to get online members with them. And uh, they had their first Skype session here. I even briefly, I mean, participated into that. But lately, there are things happening in the team that creates a lot of unhappiness. So um, the online students are saying that, you know, they came to the Skype, but the on-campus students didn't show up. But this, the on-campus students say it was an issue of 
miscalculating of the difference in the time zone. So there's a one, one and a half hour, so maybe the guy in, in the United States, for whatever reason, maybe uh, they are on the summertime or whatever, and um, he came at a different time. So it was very, very frustrating because it was like 1 a.m. their time, he didn't sleep, He's waiting for the call, but for us, we are saying, oh, the call is not yet. It's one and a half hour later. So when we go, we don't find these people and say, oh, maybe they are not interested, so that's fine. And then what happens? Uh, we have you know, an issue brewing. So this is really about organizing. So how do we, so my, my, my um, you know, answer to you just now is what is the learning? Did you learn anything from that? How, how will you behave differently next time so that you know, this thing doesn't happen. So I, I suggested, for example, sending a reminder email uh, half a day before the meeting and maybe 15 minutes before the meeting, sending a text message. You know, so that will help align and orchestrate resources. So you just imagine the on-campus students, they have allocated the time. So that's a resource and they are there. The online students, he also allocated the time, he has connected the computer, he has got the internet. These are things, these are all resources that we are putting together, but we got them off by one and a half hour. And that was good enough to not only bring zero result, but bring negative results to the, to the team. There is a bit of unhappiness, actually quite a bit of unhappiness and frustration. So organization is extremely important. So now we planned to have the meeting. We said we will have the meeting. We said who will be in the meeting. But now when you start organizing it, this is the time where maybe different set of skills are required. Likewise, for this class to happen, someone needs to open the door, someone needs to book the venue, someone needs to, you know, drive here. And all this, when they work flawlessly, perfectly, it feels like, yes, it's, it's expected, but you, you, you and I know that all you need is we come and find the door locked. And, and that could actually you know, change the entire, the entire plan. Uh, part of the organization is when you decide the individual's job description. So you say you are a finance manager and this is your job description. This is what is required from you. You are the human resource manager, or you are a human resource executive, or you are the operator, or the receptionist, or the driver, or the lecturer. What is expected from you? This is all under, falls under the organization uh, part, or organizing function of the management. Also, def it defines and identifies departments authorities, activities, and relationship between different, uh, between different units and departments. So that's the organization part. So planning, then O, P, O, D, C, planning, organizing, then we go to directing. <clears throat> directing is not about giving orders. Directing is about empowering individuals to achieve their best. So you imagine you have a team, the team have five people, or you have a company that has 500 people, or you are a CEO of a multinational company that have thousands of people. How do you, 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 there's no way that you go and direct each one of them what to do, but how can you empower them? So you've, you have a plan, you have a strategic plan, you have a compelling vision, and then you've organized your your, your, your uh, company, organization, business unit, so it has, we know who the boss is, we know uh, who's, uh, uh, everyone knows on paper what is his or her job. Now, how do you direct them? How do you press the, the start button and then these people really start working together and achieving the results? And that's the time where you want to empower individuals so that they bring the best. Not only I look, oh, my, my, uh, my job says just open the door. It didn't say um, check if the aircon is, is working. But if, if someone actually is empowered that he or she feels like, look, the 
the um, direction part is actually allowing me or encouraging me to take initiative, then it's about directing is about empowering individuals to be the, the best. It also, if, you're, if people are working in groups, so it's about how you empower the group, the team, to have a very positive dynamic so that at the end of the day, the business objectives are, are achieved. And it's also about leadership. Now, coordination. So how do I know that when my department is now need to do something that requires his department? So that piece of paper needs to go to his department to be endorsed. Or, or if he is the stock keeper, then this item needs to come from his store to my maybe production line at a certain exact time. This is the time where coordination is extremely important. This will, at the end of the day, boils down to communication. So if you recall the success framework for communication, this is the time how to use it to empower individuals, encourage uh, positive team dynamic, provide leadership, coordinate and communicate. And this is, at this level, when you are pressing the on button, the start button, you need people to be motivated. You need to people to be driven. So you don't need to say much. You don't need to say, oh, you go do that. You go. Then the moment you stop instructing, it will, it will uh, the whole operation will, will cease. So this is the part about directing. It's about coordination and um, clear and impactful communication. So communication needs to change, as we said, behavior. And it has to be spelled in British English for you to get the quiz right. For those who have tried that. Okay. The, the, the last part is controlling. Now, controlling is, again, may have um, um, a bit of a negative kind of uh, connotation to it. But you, you think about, you decide to, you go out trying to make the customer happy. You go out trying to wash the cars in a certain way. And you've planned it. And then you have uh, organized everything. You bought the detergent, the water, the manpower. And these people are extremely motivated, your operators. They, they want to wash the car. But for whatever reason, the cars are not showing up. Then you start to say, ask yourself, what's going on? Then, then maybe that's the time where you, you need to say, am I controlling the whole process right? Do I need to change and alter things in the in the process. So first you need to develop performance standards and key performance indicators. So I want, for example, if I'm talking about customer happiness, so I, and also maybe business volume, so I want to wash 100 cars a day, example. And I want my customers to be uh, able to, uh, on a survey from one to 10, to tick an eight or above for the satisfaction. So you, you did everything that you think that will make the customer happy, but so this is when you set the performance standard. So if, for example, after doing everything that you've done, your level of customer satisfaction is four or three, then there is a difference between the uh, set standards and the achieve results, and that's the job of, of controlling. We'll talk about this further. So you need to, after you have identified the performance standards that you would like to have, so for example, in a classroom, the performance standards that I put, maybe I want how many A's, I want what is the average CGPA that I would like to have, uh, how low the failure rate, if any. So these are performance standards that I set for, 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 for the class. And, and let's say uh, you've got a midterm exam. Then if I see like, wow, this is like, oh, everyone is scoring an A. So it means maybe the exam was easy. Or how come like, 
half of them failed. What, what's happening? So this is where I measure the result against the planned targets. So, so if the results are fine, so I've got right about uh, the average CGPA that I was hoping for for the class, uh, the failure rate is small or non-existent. Uh, the number of A's is not that big also. This is also something we don't want. Then that's fine. But if I have an issue, let's say a 70% failure rate, so I, I need to do something. I start to see, I want to verify the execution against you know, the normal or ways of doing things. So for example, did I just simply cancel classes? Uh, did I not take attendance so the guys you didn't show up? Uh, what, what, what went wrong? So if I can identify what went wrong, then I could improve the situation hopefully before the final so that eventually you guys all you know, um, uh, succeed and, and move on. Likewise, if I achieve the results that I was looking for, or if I um, um, have results that are far better than what I ho hoped for, I could say, oh, so this is apparently is a very good group of students, so maybe I can you know, give them more challenges or, or, or set it a, a more challenging kind of goal so that they can perform even, uh, even better. So this is the corrective action that I, uh, I can take. So this is the part about controlling. Now, we said that management is about planning, organizing, directing, and controlling. And if you look at any, these are the management functions. And these are, if you notice, are the business functions. So if you recall, in the business we say it could be, and it could be production, could be manufacturing, could be HR, that's human resources, the facilities, the financial, ICT is the information and communication technology. So any one of the business function can be managed through the management function. So I could, for example, for the uh, ICT, I could, and I should, let's say for a university, plan it, so where, where, where will you have the internet access, what kind of bandwidth, how many computer labs I will have, uh, will it uh, be, what kind of operating system, what kind of brand, so if you notice, the, the, the university purchases one brand of, of computers, and that's for a reason, because they are having maybe better deals, uh, maintenance becomes easier, they could if, if a computer you know, breaks down, they could simply just exchange it with a uh, standby unit. This is all planned. Against like every time there is a promotion, we buy just a different brand, and then that will make maybe maintaining the computers, uh, the software, and things like that is, is, um, is, is a nightmare. And the planning will be uh, when will we be buying the software, how are we going to uh, renew the licenses? How to ensure that every software that is on the university-owned computer is in compliance with, you know, with the license regulations and things like that. Then organization. So who leads this department? How many units in this department? So you have uh, a help desk, you have a development unit. Maybe the, you never dealt with a development unit. It, it works in the background, but the help desk are the people who would help you when your login doesn't work, when your email. So this is how you organize it. Then the direction is, again, uh, how, how to motivate these, this, this, this group of people so that they go about doing, doing their work and how to control it so, uh, so that all the computers are working, uh, again, from a um, uh, licensing point of view, all the licenses are uh, updated. If the software is upgraded, uh, we, we have the newer version of it, and things like that. I can do the same thing for financial, for human resources, for facilities, and for production. So this provides us with a framework. So I just prepared one for the HR management, that's human resource management. 
So first you need to, to do your planning. So if, the planning would be how many people will I need? How many departments do I have? Uh, each department will be staffed by how many uh, people? Then I need to prepare the job description for these people. So if I want 10 lecturers, um, these, uh, do I want them to have a PhD or not? Uh, is this a requirement? Um, and, and, and things like that. Then let's say people have applied. So we've recruited them. Now we need to select. So let's say we have 20 vacancies and we have 50 applications. There, there'll be some interviews and then we select and, and we put them, so you will be in this department, you will be in that school, um, and, and so on and so forth. But it doesn't end there. So how will we pay them? So the salary, you know, someone would ask for a certain salary. We also maybe have a certain budget that is connected to our financial uh, planning. Now we also need, before we develop the plan for the, both the financial and the HR, we need to see how much other universities are paying so that we, we are still competitive. So we don't just you know, lose talented people just because we didn't pay them uh, right. And when the people are in, it doesn't end there. We have to train, we have to develop. It doesn't say, oh, you are a lecturer, so there's no need for you to be trained. There is a requirement, let's say, for Taylor's University that every one of us to attend at least 30 hours of classes uh, a year. So that's, 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 uh, that's, a, that's a requirement. And after all this, I need to manage the performance. So, so for example, uh, as, a, as, a, as a lecturer, uh, we need to see, have you met the um, key performance indicators that, that we have uh, set for you in terms of uh, how many papers you've published, how many PhD students you have supervised, uh, how much research money you have brought to the university, have you written grants so that you can get research money from, um, from the government and maybe from the industry. All these things we need to uh, check against an agreed upon criteria. So you could see it's about, I picked this because uh, I felt it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, because it deals with people. So for human resources, you will need to do planning. You need to do uh, organization. You need to do um, direction and eventually controlling. So this is actually what I have to say today about uh, management. And uh, do you have any question to, to ask? On Friday, I'm going to talk about the money in the organization. So um, that will be also, I hope, an interesting class. And um, we'll be having um, some visitors, uh, so rather a visitor who, who is from um, an American university. She has been with us before. And she's running actually a study about the MOOC. So she'll be seeking some volunteers to you know, to have an interview with her and um, she will, you know, maybe give you some questionnaires. So I hope that you will collaborate with her. Uh, if you have no questions, we can stop here. Sorry? So she wants to speak with eight students. So if anyone would like to volunteer, uh, please speak to Chris, give your name to Chris. She will talk to you after the class. Yeah, that would be, I, I would highly appreciate if some of you uh, uh, volunteer. Great. So if no other question, I would like to thank you very much and see you on Friday. Thanks a lot. Thanks.